thanks for all, uh, every, for everybody for coming out today for this. Uh, I hope that we're all lobster fans in the crowd. Uh, no. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. All right. Perfect. <laughs> so we've got a beautiful recipe today for you that uh, features um, some great uh, PI lobster. Um, done in a kind of an interesting way. Uh, we're going to feature some of the Deep Roots Distillery absinthe in our recipe, um, which has a nice anise flavor, so it gives it that uh, that, that really great uh, licorice um, uh, flavors that will that'll kind of come through. Uh, we're using some other local ingredients in this uh, as well, including some of um, Glasgow Glen uh, Gouda cheese uh, that will kind of smooth and round it out at the end. And then we've got lots and lots of aromatics to add to that, um, including uh, island garlic, shallot, carrots, uh, and some fennel. All right, so um, uh, lobster risotto. Has anyone attempted this at home? Yes, we spoke uh, just before this demo, and I think you've done lobster risotto with fennel and absinthe before. So uh, so in the culinary world, very little is, is a chef's secret. We share back and forth all the time and, and often duplicate recipes. We'll see how close this recipe is to yours. And um, and, and with every recipe, um, as a chef, I would encourage you all to put your own spin and flair on it. So uh, just because this one features lobster doesn't mean that you uh, can't use uh, PI mussels or, or another great ingredient in it. Oh, like pig. Yeah, exactly. So we can we can substitute uh, that lobster for what did you say? Like pig. pig. Yeah. So some pork would be really great in it. So like some pork belly. Yeah, pork belly, bacon. That would add a really really great flavor. Yeah. All right. So um, the first thing that we're going to do with risotto is we are going to make a flavorful broth. Um, so I've got a uh, a pot here with some boiling water in it. And um, to that water, I'm just going to rough chop a bit of our celery. And I'm going to add that into the boiling liquid to give it some flavor. Um, I've also got an onion here. Uh, this is a Spanish onion, but you can use a white onion or, or any other type. Uh, again, this is just going to get a rough chop. And this is what we call aromatics in the culinary world. So uh, this is what's going to kind of steep our water and give it all that flavor. So now that I've got that in there, um, I've got some bay leaf here. Sometimes you can find fresh bay leaf in your garden or at the grocery store. You can certainly use that. Today I'm using dry. And into that broth, we're also going to add a little bit of lemon juice. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit in there. We'll save a little bit of this lemon for later. So while our broth is on, Yes, this small pot will be for our rice. So in this, we'll add a generous bit of ADL butter. Uh, that's about a quarter pound for the cake. <laughs> and then we'll add a little bit of olive oil as well. And when this, uh, this butter is melted, we're going to add uh, some carrots, some shallots, and some garlic, which I've got minced here. And I'm just going to cut a little bit of celery as well. And we'll just put some of that trim right into our stock to give it some flavor. I like to use uh, celery heart. It's the, the middle bit of the celery and I find it's got a less bitter flavor than the outside stocks. Got a 
little bit of chopped celery, carrot, shallot, and garlic. Yes. All in there. Yes. And we have some salt, Christine. Yep. So at this stage, I'll add a little pinch of salt in just to get the flavors to intensify. Get that a little stir around with a nice thick wooden spoon. You start to smell that now? Translucent, um, and it and it should kind of um, squish if you pinch it with your finger. Uh, it is uh, it's just on a nice low temperature here now. While that's happening, I'm going to just show you how to crack a lobster. Now, uh, who here is uh, from Prince Edward Island? Uh, most of the men. Who is from off of Prince Edward Island? Yes. Great. So. Whether you're from here or away, you may or may not know how to shell a lobster. Uh, many of us that grew up here on PEI, born with a lobster in our hand kind of thing. <laughs> um, so uh, this is a female lobster. Um, she's got a nice wide tail. And if you uh, flip it over, um, some of the swimmerettes are very fine. Uh, that indicates it's a female. Male lobsters sometimes have a larger uh, claw. Uh, these claws are a little bit smaller than a, a male lobster of the same size. And so I'm going to just take those claws and, and tear them down. And that just separates them easily. At this point, get that large crusher claw. That's the big fat one. A little, yeah, juice. No, don't waste that juice. <laughs> and then give that. Give it that extra bit of lobster flavor. Okay. With the knuckles. No, don't eat the uh, shells. Nope. No, you could, but they might get stuck in your teeth. So we'll save that. Okay. Those shells go straight in there. Get all of that great lobster meat out of the knuckles. sure that everyone, even in the bathroom, will probably smell this nice uh, aromatic mixture here. And it's almost ready for a rice to go in, but before that, I'll just finish cracking this. Whoa! That's juicy lobster. Do females eat more like juice? Um, they, they, they may, but um, the females have something that's unique and special to them uh, that the male lobsters don't have. And I'll show you in one moment when we do the tail. So if I go to separate the tail, I'll just give that a little twist. And then I'll show you, you can see in there, a lot of, there's a little bit of that red rope. And um, that red row has a lot of flavor in it as well. Many people really enjoy that. Some people do not. That's like lobster meat. Yeah. Or and you like can... another light up shell. Yeah. It's a little, uh, the row is a, it's a, So I guess the males like more juice? 
Uh, yes, they can. Oh, that guy right in there. Do you take that out soon? Yes, we'll strain that liquid when we, uh, before we make our risotto with it, yes. We'll give this lobster a little rough chop here. And that's all ready to go ahead to our risotto. Now, at this stage, we'll add some of our Oreo rice. I've got a package here. There's different brands that you can buy. This one will work nicely for us. I've got about a cup and a half of Oreo here. And with that bit of butter, olive oil, vegetables all in this pot. Now just going to give this rice a really good stir around. It should also become nice and translucent as it cooks. And because, uh, because this demo is only a few minutes, uh, I've done a, uh, a lobster stock ahead of time. And so I've got that in this pot here. And I'm now going to start to add the stock, just one ladle at a time. While stirring, and that's kind of the key to a good risotto is always keep stirring your pot until your rice is done. It's my job today. <laughs> Christine's getting a great workout uh, by stirring all of this rice around. Oh, you like that stuff, light stuff. And I'm just doing the, the light stuff, that's right. <laughs> <laughs>
so it's fairly thick. We'll add another small ladle full, and a ladle full, and a ladle full again uh, until our rice is fully cooked. Yeah, we want it to be cooked, but still have a little bit of bite, and uh, we call that al dente. Uh, so I don't like to cook risotto um, too much under too al dente because I find that the grains of rice just get stuck in your teeth. They get stuck in between your molars in the back, and so um, I find that's a is a common uh, common mistake is that. Many chefs will undercook their risotto uh, quite a bit, and um, it's, it, the rice is still quite crunchy. Uh, we want to have it uh, cooked, but not cooked till it's complete mush. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, it's got a really, uh, fennel's got a really strong licorice flavor. Yes, yeah, 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 it's way strong. Yeah, so um, after this demo today, this recipe will be posted uh, onto the Canada Games website. And Food Island, both? Yeah, Canada's Food Island website, perfect. We love using uh, ADL butter. Uh, many many recipes will call for unsalted butter. Uh, for me, um, I just add a little less salt at the end of the recipe, and I use the full uh, salted butter. You're looking pretty good over here. This is Gouda. Yes. So, um, a traditional uh, Italian risotto might use um, Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh, it's a really common one, the, the king of cheeses. Um, in this case, we're using a lot of island ingredients. And one thing that uh, I've learned through my culinary career to do a lot of is um, what grows together goes together. And so if we're using island lobster and all these nice island ingredients, why not use an island-made cheese to go along with it? Uh, and I think we're going we're gonna to nail that pairing uh, even better with that. Uh, so I've got a couple of different types of gouda in this bowl that will grate into this risotto. Um, and then we'll garnish it with a little bit on top. But I've got 
kind of a, a nice herb gouda and one that's a, a chili gouda as well. Um, It smells so good. It smells great, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, now it smells wet. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Breaking the rules here and I'll walk away from my pot. But... <laughs>
person, you're going to love this recipe. It's nice and subtle, but it does come through that kind of licorice anise flavor. Um, in, in this batch of rice here, for all of this rice, we used about half of this box. But for a small uh, four person batch at home, just a couple of drops of that perhaps it will do the trick. And uh, save the rest of the bottle for your late, later on your Friday evening. So um, feel free to stick around. I think that our video is going to end now, uh, but uh, our risotto is still cooking just a little bit, so I'll finish it off for you here in the meantime. Um, thank you all for uh, coming out to our panel today.